Hello and in this video we're going to fly the Messerschmitt 109 where the ailerons completely stop working. A couple of days ago I had a subscriber write in asking me could you show a video where there's something to do with aircraft failures. You know that's a really good idea because not only is it going to allow me to show the actual failure in the aircraft in DCS it's going to let me show it in the mission editor how to set it up. But more importantly, perhaps than any of those things, is it's going to give me the opportunity to share some of the knowledge I learned when I was doing my flying scholarship years ago, where we did deal with unusual situations and how to recover from them. So strap in as we jump into this Messerschmitt, about to have a complete aileron Check failure. Okay, I had time, almost forgot. Hopefully not too late. Maybe it is a bit too late. Okay, let's turn that down. At the moment, I still ha clearly have roll control. You can see my controls there, lower right. Let's get rid of the gun sight. And now, oh no, still got roll control. Okay. Let's leave it centralized-ish because when it goes, it goes. And wherever it's stuck, it's stuck. And it's gone. If you have a look, look at my controls all the way to the left, all the way to the right. And yeah, we, uh, track AR is still not working for some reason, so I'll use the mouse. Look, you can see my stick there, left and right, no response. If we look over to the aileron there, again, it's not doing anything. Pitch, clearly still working. That not in question, nor was it ever. So let's leave it there. If track AR doesn't come back on, that's no concern either. Runway right beneath us. So... If we can't steer using this stick, what can we use to steer? Well, there's two things. The main thing that we're going to use is the secondary effect of the rudder. I'm going to go into the principles of this after we've landed. So stick around for that if you're interested. Don't just think, oh, well, I don't fly the Messerschmitt and so this isn't really of use. And even if I did, I'm not going to set myself up with an error on failure. If you fly any sort of combat mission on any regular basis, I know you'll have had a wing shut off in some aircraft, half a wing shut off, your controls shut off or whatever on some aircraft where you have to fly stick all the way over. And sometimes it's just not quite enough. And if you need that extra little bit of control, this is it. I wonder if we can recover from a spin. Look at that. <laughs> the skills, right? With no aileron control. Again. Look, it's not doing anything. So let's see if we can quickly get back to base. At some point, uh, sometimes track air just randomly starts working again. It's because it, I didn't have it uh, working when I started DCS. I was in the mission editor, but sometimes it comes on, doesn't it? I don't know why. I'll pick this runway here. So let's dump the gear right now. Again, using the rudder there to steer. Moving the stick side to side, it's just a second nature, natural force of habit. I, I can't help it. It's it, we, I've proven it doesn't do anything. Of course, I'm using the stick for the vertical control using the elevator. I've got flaps set to about 50% at this point. I wish I could just turn my head left to show you that, but that is what I've done. I'm going to go for that. There we go. If you remember, I said before there were two effects that I was looking to exploit to steer the aircraft. The second one that I didn't mention, but you see it here just before landing, is the torque effect from the propeller. You watch what I'm doing just before I land with the power on, off, on, off. And look what happens to the way that the aircraft appears to be steering. Just a few degrees, but that's all I need. Using sort of differential braking to try and keep it on the runway. Bit of bit of rudder as well. There we go. Probably a little bit more skiddy on the runway than I would have liked, but it's a safe landing. We are down. Let's vacate and jump into the ground skull to see what exactly was going on here. I have someone helping me, aren't I, sweetie? Eh? Want to say hello? 
She absolutely adores Foster, your sweetheart. Anyway, you let daddy get on with this. So let's take a look at the ground flight skull. Here is our aircraft. Currently red, we are flying straight and level. And here's a very exaggerated rudder. Currently, this rudder is perfectly in line. We've not pressed either rudder pedal. But if we press the left rudder pedal down, we of course know that the aircraft will begin yawing to the left. Let's look at now this sort of greenish yellow plane. This is the one that we're interested in. Clearly, the rudder is going to look something like this. Again, we've pushed the left rudder pedal in. Rudder sticks out to the left and pushing against the airflow causes the aircraft to yaw to the left. Now, why would this also cause the aircraft to roll to the left as a secondary effect? To answer that question, let's have a look at the airflow on the original model. So if you imagine each of these blue lines sort of roughly accounting for some airflow we see, it's passing over the aircraft somewhat evenly. Now, if I copy this airflow and having copied it, the exact same one, I'm going to move it over top of the yawing aircraft. And if I try and center it like before, notice what's going on here. The same airflow centered in the same position on the aircraft, the aircraft clearly flying in the same direction still. Look at how much additional air is getting under the right wing now. One, two, three, four, five, six lines versus the left wing. Let's arguably call it two, if not three. Even if you say, yeah, you exaggerated it in reality, it would only be 5%. Okay, 5%. Imagine though, a heavy plane, 100 tons, well, that's 50 tons being held-ish by each wing. If you add 5% under one wing and knock 5% off the other wing, that's still going to induce several tons of roll force onto that aircraft. So that's exactly what's going on. This is the force that we are exploiting when it comes to saving the aircraft that has no more roll control from the ailerons. Let's jump over to the editor now where I show you how to create this mission for yourself using any aircraft and any map. Let's get on with it. So I'm going to choose the aircraft failures and I'm going to pick a suitable base. This one here will do. Click it down. I'm going to drop down to the Messerschmitt 109K4. Change the skill to player. Important. Cannot cause failures to the AI. Must be a player. And I'm going to just change the drop down from USA to Germany just to get access to uh, the, the more appropriate liveries, right? And I really like this one. I think this is a really cool one. This Red 70 aids uh, Foundation Messerschmitt. I guess maybe it means Foundation Messerschmitt V2. No idea. In any case, this is the one that I'm going to fly as. And to set up the failure, again, skill player, we come over this icon. You don't see this icon. Look, I'll just prove the point. If you set it to an AI, see you lose that icon. That's what you require uh, to set the failure. And I'm going to use the aileron control failure. Simple as that. I'm only going to cover this one failure for this one aircraft. And I'm aware there are many different aircraft, many different failures. The failures are always the same. Some aircraft have many failures. Some aircraft have a few. If I'd have covered them all, the video would have been 5,073 hours long. I'm not sure everyone would have stayed to the end. And so we're just going to look at this one. Don't forget, you can have more than one failure at once if you so wish. Here we have a time after hours and this many minutes. So in other words, as soon as the mission starts, within one minute, there's going to be 100% probability of an airline failure. If we change this to one, then there's going to be one minute where there's absolutely no problem. And then within one minute, there's going to be a failure of the ailerons 100%. If I change this to two, then again, there's going to be zero to one minute, absolutely fine. And then somewhere between minute one, and minute three, i.e. that two minute window, there's going to be a failure of 100%. Clearly, we can drop this down uh, to anything, 50%. It's like a 50-50 coin toss in the ether somewhere, deciding whether to have this failure. In order for me to do this demonstration nice and quick, I'm going to set it to the minimum, which is zero minutes within one minute. Unfortunately, if you try to set that to zero, it auto corrects it to one. So the only way uh, to have a failure, the quickest way is zero after zero hours, zero minutes, one minute window, 100%. So that's what we're going to do. 
Pussycat's getting all excited. She can't wait to see what's going to happen. And I'm going to drop this. How high are we over the ground here? We're only about 50, 60 feet above sea level. So let's pop us nice and low. A thousand feet will do. And I'll pop us down here approaching the airfield. I'm just going to click on the airfield. Make sure it's blue because I'm playing as blue. And let's give ourselves some nice, uh, I don't know. Let's go for scattered six. I always like to mix it up every time I play it. Let's go. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, make sure you leave a like. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.